The ocean is more of an inspiration than any part of the, the country you could live in because it's always moving. There's always something going on that's, the tide is coming in, the tide's going out, the seagulls, the seals, the, the, it's, the it's just the sunsets, the sunrises, the fog, uh, the lobster fishermen, you know, going in and out with their boats and their traps. And it's just always something on the, on the go. And it's really much, so much nicer than if you lived in a lake or if you lived in a, in a city. Banana bread. Kind of thin. I don't know why it's so thin. Hmm? Pop, pop, pop. That's it. Cranberries. I'm gonna wash my hands once in a while. That's your boil. That's your boil. I think I chose the ocean because I was born on it, you know, it was part of my childhood. And uh, it just, uh, when I was a child, and uh, my father used to make us work hard in the fields, we had to bake hay and make, plant potatoes and things like that. And my, my sister and my brother he, and I, he used to take to the fields, but I used to sneak away and go out and sit on the rocks and look at the ocean. And um, he said, uh, he, my sisters and brothers, they said, well, if she's not going to work, we're not going to work. So he had to come and get me and bring me back or, and say, and he said to me, Elmer, he says, you should have been my boy. He said, you would have made a good sailor because you're always looking at the ocean and you're always dreaming. You're a big dreamer. He said, I don't think you're going to amount to too much because you dream too much, you know. I had a real good partner that, you know, some nice traveling person, partner. I'd sell that old car and get me a station wagon type of thing to sleep in, and uh, I'd travel. I could sit there all day long and just look, 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 look. They'd love it. Came over the Alcan nine times, that's a lot of times. Alaskan Highway. small in here. This is uh, this is what I call the same name as my book, the this and that. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. My this and that shop. And uh, so when I collect these things in here, I collect them at the Salvation Army and, and at yard sales all year long. And after 20 years of this, I kind of know what sells and what doesn't sell. I make these little esca-sized blocks. There's no, not very plain here. Put the, see it's a little, just a little piece of block of wood. Put block on floor, walk around it twice. Sit down, relax. You have just walked around the block two times. So that's just a little joke. Oh, somebody took my mosquito one. There's my little things like this. I'm not very artistic when it comes to a paintbrush. Oh, this is a nice place, eh? <laughs> no, Long Cove, Nova Scotia. 
I opened up this shop 20 years ago. I just am really, really am an Indian lover. Very much so, an Eskimo. I used to have quite a relationship with the Eskimos in Alaska. They used to, I used to drink a lot and tend barn and drink a lot and they used to take care of me, make sure I got home okay. And they were really, we, we were really close. I do have lots of news, newspaper coverage. I get, this is a, that's kind of faded. The uh, school bus, an odd attraction. That's in the Liverpool Advance in August 1998. So that is 11 years ago when I first had the school bus, when I had the school bus in the hostel. It was, the duck hunt is always only here for the month of October and part of November, so all summer long it would stood empty, and it was, it was nice inside. It had six bunks and a nice kitchen, and, but then after a while, it seems like the younger people didn't want to be in this type of atmosphere. They wanted more to be uh, near their email and the, and the young, other young people around the bars and things. They just didn't, they just didn't want to be here anymore. I live this kind of uh, centric lifestyle. There is always plenty to do. <laughs> I have a garden. I have to plant in the spring. I have eel grass I have to gather off the beach for my garden. I have to uh, bring my own water. There isn't any wells here. So that, uh, those jobs are, and I have to cut my own wood if I want to have fire. And. Uh, it's just one thing after another, you know, and I have all these customers and people coming each day to ask me lots of questions about genealogy and things. And, and, I, and I dig clams and I pick all the berries that are in season. And so if you want to live primitive off the land, you don't sit and watch TV all day, you know. You just you go on, go on, get on with it. And it makes you young, keeps you young and it keeps your spirits high. And so I think a lot of more people should be doing that instead of sitting in apartments and, and you know, and just watching TV and, and, and feeling sorry for themselves. Because <laughs> this way you don't have time to, to think about uh, getting sick or, or worrying about you not have enough company or something. You just get on with your life and, and be glad that uh, you're healthy enough to do so.